Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the latest on the search for two suspects involved in a shooting near a popular West Side restaurant. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. Chilling new video out of the horrific incident in Waukesha where an SUV plows through a crowd of people at a holiday parade. What we're learning now about the suspect coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's chilly out there. We're in the 40s. Definitely grab that jacket. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, November 23rd. And Steph's back. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. How are, are things? Good. Like your tie. I know it's not for the Longhorns, but we'll just pretend. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will pretend. Yes, we will. Uh, well, it's good to have you back with us uh, this week. You, you're with us through Thanksgiving morning? With you. Yes, yes. right. That's uh -huh. right. And we'll be here together. And then we're going to take a day on Friday. Mm -hmm. Mike is here, too, and Stephen will join us a little bit later on. Mike, how'd you sleep last night? Not bad. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you didn't leave your windows open last night. Yeah, uh, it's really cold this yeah. morning. Steph didn't get the uh, gray suit blue shirt memo again. No, so. I did not <laughs> I get it. I don't know what's going on with the tour. Anyway, great minds think alike, I guess. We have uh, a couple of high clouds out there, but mostly clear skies, light wind, and boy, it is cold this morning. We're at 43 in town, 34 Bolverde, Bernie Stage. Comfort is at 33 right now. And then you go a little bit further out in the hill country. We've got some freezing readings up there. Fredericksburg, Junction as well as Ozona and we'll probably drop down a couple of more notches in the next couple of hours because we've got all the good conditions very dry air mostly clear skies light wind so just down a couple of more degrees mold is on the moderate side grass juniper pigweed on the low side from yesterday's count and then we're going to see a huge warm up today 30 plus degrees basically throughout the rest of the afternoon 67 at noon 73 for a high temperature a really nice day However, late in the day, we're going to start to see it's still going to be comfortable, but we'll start to see the humidity begin its return. It's going to start to come in here overnight, and then tomorrow's basically going to be a humid day, but that's preceding the front that moves through here on Thanksgiving. Still looking at some rain on Thanksgiving. What about the rest of the long holiday weekend? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph. Thanks, Mike. This morning, San Antonio police say they are looking for two men involved in a shooting outside Delicious Tamales on the west side. The shooting happened last night on Culebra Road near North Hamilton Avenue. Police think that's where two men saw a man driving into the parking lot. They say when they told him he was driving too fast, that's when they all started fighting. And that's when police say one of the suspects shot the victim. That victim is still in critical condition. There are new details this morning about a driver authorities say was behind the wheel of that SUV that plowed through a Christmas parade in Wisconsin. 39 year old Daryl Brooks is expected to be in court today to answer the charges. ABC's M. Wynn is following the story. Financial donation. This morning, a city in mourning. Waukesha, Wisconsin, still reeling after an SUV tore through a holiday parade, leaving five people dead. Hundreds gathered last night for a prayer vigil not far from the scene of the tragedy. At least 48 injured, including 18 children, 10 of them still fighting for their lives. There was just like so many like bodies in the road um, and then I saw them like start to pick them up and they were like little kids. I literally saw roughly 10 people bounce off that car and, and you could hear thud, 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 thud as he drove through that. This morning, police saying 39-year-old Daryl Brooks was the man behind the wheel, arrested and charged with five counts of first-degree intentional homicide. Earlier this month, Brooks was accused of running over the mother of his child with what appears to be the same SUV. He was out on a $1,000 bail. Investigators believe Brooks was fleeing another crime scene when he drove into the Christmas festivities, though he was not being pursued at that time. <laughs> This as we learn more about the victims. Many of those killed were a part of the group Dancing Grannies. Brian Wallace saying he was with one of them as she took her final breaths. She died in my arms. Family and friends still in shock. We are hurting. We are angry. We are sad. We are Waukesha strong. This tragedy, authorities say, is not connected to terrorism. Now, if he is convicted of murder, Brooks faces life in prison. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Making headlines overnight, authorities in Bulgaria have launched an investigation into a passenger bus fire that left at least 45 people dead and seven injured. 
Authorities believe the bus was carrying a total of 52 passengers, 12 of them children. The fire erupted around 3 a.m. local time. The bus was traveling west of the country's capital. Authorities say most of the passengers were tourists from North Macedonia. The trial of the three men charged in the killing of Ahmad Arbery could soon be in the hands of a jury. Prosecutors are seeking murder convictions in the 25-year-old man's death. They plan to wrap up their legal argument to jurors today. Then the judge will give legal instructions to the jury before it begins deliberations. Arbery was chased and fatally shot in February last year after he was spotted running in a neighborhood outside the Georgia port city of Brunswick. The White House confirming President Joe Biden intends to run for re-election in 2024. It's reportedly an attempt to address concerns about whether he could commit to another presidential campaign given his age. The president turned 79 over the weekend as maintained he wants to run again. The White House has not indicated whether Biden would automatically endorse Vice President Kamala Harris for president if he decides not to run. Right now it's 435 or 436. About 42 degrees. And still ahead, real life Grinches are already out trying to steal your Christmas presents. We're going to tell you about some easy ways to protect your deliveries from porch pirates. What the heck is wrong with people? Mean. What the heck is wrong with our Spurs? <laughs> Up next, That's Spurs a different thing. tried to avoid another loss against the Suns at the AT&T Center last night. That did not go according to plan. We have the lowlights. Aww. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting out at 42 degrees. It's pretty cold out there, and you might want to keep a jacket or a sweater all day long. We'll be checking in with Mike pretty soon. Our San Antonio Spurs tried to avoid a five-game losing streak last night, hosting the Red Hot Suns at the AT&T Center. It's a good start for the Spurs in the first quarter. DeJounte Murray comes up with the deflection and the steal and takes it back the other way. Misses the layup, but Derek White there for the follow. However, the Suns would turn up the heat from there. Phoenix had six players finishing double figures that helped the Suns roll past the Spurs 115-111. This was the Suns' 13th straight win, if you're keeping track, and trust me, we are. DeJounte Murray at 18 points, 11 assists, 10 rebounds for his seventh career triple-double. Spurs have now lost five straight, eight of 10, for their second worst start in franchise history. For Coach Pop, it's the same old story. Turnovers, assists, boards, uh, we played with them, uh, we scored in the paint uh, very well, but we didn't shoot the threes, and uh, that's the name of the game in today's NBA. Up next, Spurs welcome the Atlanta Hawks to town. That game is set for tomorrow night, 7.30 at the AT&T Center. The big game in our big game covers this Friday night will feature the number one and undefeated Brennan Bears going up against Austin Bowie, who is 10 and 2 in the third round of the high school football playoffs. Bears improved to 12 and 0 or only one of two undefeated teams left in 12's top 12. Meanwhile, Bowie Bulldogs were one of five Austin area teams that eliminated San Antonio area teams last weekend. They're a great team. They play uh, other great teams. That's what makes them great. So we're excited to see what they have. It's been a great season. We've had some great guys. You got Ashton, you got Tyler. We just were spread out. We have talent throughout the whole, the whole core defense, offense, and we just try to keep that rolling every day. Brennan takes on Bowie at a neutral site Friday, 7 o'clock, Canyon Cougar Stadium in New Braunfels. Big announcement by UTSA Athletics. Tickets for the Conference USA Championship game at the Alamo Dome December 3rd will be free for UTSA students. Tickets can be claimed for the Roadrunners' first ever appearance in the Conference USA title game starting on Monday. We're, we're, we're not going to discuss the Conference Championship game other than uh, what April and Sarah is already doing to get our students uh, in that game, which I think is just a huge, huge deal by her to be that, you know, uh, had that much uh, thinking, planning already ahead to be in front of that and for her to be so unselfish to, to help our kids like that. I thought that was unbelievable. Congratulations to the Roadrunners Frank Harris, Clarence Hicks, and Hunter DuPlessis, who swept the Conference USA Weekly Awards for Offensive, Defensive, and Special Teams Players of the Week. And that is a look at morning sports. Yes, congratulations. How exciting. I know, right? Very exciting. Time now, 442 and about 42 degrees out there.
Still ahead, porch pirates are already on the lookout for goods being delivered to your door. However, there are some products that help deter the thieves. And next, Elizabeth Holmes takes a stand in her own criminal trial where she's accused of defrauding patients. And welcome back. It's 445. Elizabeth Holmes took the stand again on Monday, testifying in her own criminal trial. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Elizabeth Holmes takes the stand. Well, I hope you hope the jury's going to learn about you this week. Walking into court Monday, the 37 year old seen hand in hand with her partner, Billy Evans, and her mom, Noelle. The young founder became a Silicon Valley superstar when she dropped out of Stanford at just 19 to launch her own healthcare company. We've made it possible to run comprehensive laboratory tests from a tiny sample or a few drops of blood. On the stand, defending herself against allegations she defrauded patients, doctors, and investors. If convicted, Holmes faces up to decades in prison, but has pleaded not guilty. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what to expect next as day 33 of Elizabeth Holmes' trial gets underway. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, San Jose. 446, what well, is the season of giving? Unfortunately, it's also the season for taking. Porch Pirates back in full force, out scouting for package deliveries. Here's 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris with some products that can help protect what's yours. They are the Grinches stealing your holiday and your packages. So how can you protect your home deliveries? One option is a box. The big box that you sit on your porch and your delivery people can drop your packages into. They're a really great option if you can get your delivery people to use them. My experience was that it, it varied drastically. Other drawbacks, prices start at about $150 and they're space hogs. Another option, a battery powered video doorbell that can detect when packages are left on your porch. It sends you an alert and keeps tabs on your entryway. Not only are they really easy to install with no complex or intimidating wiring, but they are also pretty affordable. This Ring video doorbell is $100, and if you subscribe to a Ring Protect plan for $3 a month, it will send package alerts to you. To extend the security beyond your front door, consider adding or upgrading your floodlights to something more high tech with a camera. Consumer Reports tried three floodlight security cameras. Floodlight cameras are really just security cameras that double as floodlights. And the nice thing about floodlights is on most homes, they're in spots that are ideal places for cameras. You can easily swap out your existing floodlights with this $180 UFI. It lets you store recordings on the camera itself. And a bonus with floodlight cameras, you can control them from your smart speaker or your phone. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And what's the other advice to is tell us maybe uh, consider sending your packages to, to work. work. Yes, yes. ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Our, our work friends are a lot nicer than strangers. Yes. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Mike's here with more on yeah, our... Yeah, by the way, thank you for the uh, chocolate box from last year. So that was delicious, Mark. That, uh, that's, that was mine. That wasn't yours. <laughs> Steph opened and said, hey, Merry Christmas. Steph so, opened it. Anyway. Hey, it's Why are you dragging Stephanie into this? No, Poor it, innocent Stephanie. But it, it is sad people steal. And, the, yeah. you know, keep an yeah. eye out for your neighbors, too. So, yes. yes. We could like, all be better neighbors, I think, these days. Yeah, and somebody, you know, they come up and go, hey, will you take this package for your neighbor? It's like, well, of course. Yes. Sure, I'll take it and I'll give it back. All right. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> If you poke a hole in the bottom of the chocolate to see what it is, then, then it's okay because nobody That's, notices. So. Oh, you're that guy. Anyway, uh, beautiful view out there. Cotton candy looking off in the background. Great picture. Hey, grab a coat before you head out the door this morning because it's cold. One of the coldest mornings we've had so far this season. And a uh, nice picture of downtown. 39 is the wind chill here in town. Not much of a breeze out in portions of the hill country. Uh, right around freezing. It is freezing up around Fredericksburg and uh, even further out in toward Rock Springs and uh, further out in toward Junction. So yeah, First freeze for a lot of folks. All right, we are going to have a lot of sunshine today, but here's these high clouds that are still kind of hanging around here. So there may be a little bit of a milky shade to the sky, and that's going to be sticking around throughout most of the week. So we'll have a lot of high cloudiness all week long, and sometimes it'll be a little bit thicker than others. So 
most uh, I think today's going to see more sunshine than pretty much any day the rest of the week, a little bit more perhaps on Friday. All right, here's what dew points are doing. So it's very dry air out there. That's what helped uh, or allowed temperatures to drop down so much, and it's going to stay very comfortable throughout the day. But notice how by later on this afternoon, the winds really starts to pick up out of the southeast. We still have comfortable humidity out there. I mean, well below 60, but then look at that along the, uh, the coastal plain there as the uh, dew points start to come up. It's going to be more humid tomorrow morning. Again, not oppressively humid but more noticeable and then throughout the day here comes the humidity so yes it will be a, a very humid afternoon tomorrow but then that's preceding the front that comes through uh, early on Thanksgiving so that's going to knock the humidity on out of here very dry then on Friday it starts to work its way back in here just a little bit more by the weekend here's a satellite and radar picture over the past 12 hours the low clouds hanging around here and you really can't see the front on this map, or at least in the, the satellite imagery, but what's really going to be dictating our weather, we have the front coming through on Friday, but also then, or on Thursday, pardon me, but we've got to keep an eye on that low because that's one that's kind of hanging out here. We have the first front moving through, giving us the rain chance on Thursday, and then this thing will just sort of wait in the wings, if you will, and that's going to eject a lot of energy in our direction, and that's going to give us another chance of rain then by Saturday. So Friday, going to be pretty dry Saturday, maybe a little bit iffy if you're heading out. Sunday looks pretty good. Uh, 67 degrees today at noon. Partly cloudy skies going to warm up very quickly this morning. And then a high temperature all the way up to 73 later on. Partly cloudy skies on those high clouds out there. Humidity comes back in here overnight. Lots of clouds tomorrow. A couple of showers late as the front moves on through or as it approaches. Front comes through. Thursday looks like it's going to be one of those sort of upside down days. We'll start off much milder and then uh, drop into the low 60s, probably upper 50s in portions of the uh, hill country by late in the day on Thursday. Rain's going to be primarily first part of the day and then come to an end. Cold Friday, actually kind of a chilly weekend and Saturday looks to be a kind of a cold, wet day. Good day to stay and watch football on Saturday too. Well, Friday's football too, right? And Thursday. All three Thursday yeah, is Sunday. all day. There's three NFL games on Thursday. The Lions are going to lose. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, you, you never know. You never know. You never know when they might win, right? And then uh, Friday, all the college games, Saturday, college games too. So Friday, good shopping day, Saturday. Uh, Absolutely. Kind of day, so. And a friendly reminder, if I, if I may, uh, if you're new to San Antonio, stock up on your allergy meds. This is typically the time of ah. year, the mountain cedar season starts to wind up uh, or get going. But maybe the cold will help. Well, and then we've got a, that front on Thursday is going to be kind of breezy, though, in behind it. So uh -oh. that may be. Yeah. The uh -oh. cold is actually what up. triggers yeah. those mountain cedars. <laughs> the scores. wind. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 452, about 42 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to tell you about one new movie opening this week that may get you in the mood for Thanksgiving. Or not. <laughs> Apparently, I, I've, trust me, I've seen the preview. Uh -oh, okay. uh, here's lotto numbers. Pick three, one, six, four, fireball seven. Daily four number seven, nine, two, seven, fireball four. Cash five, two, 11, 18, 29, 30. And your Texas two step, eight, 12, 27, 29, bonus ball 23. Powerball numbers, seven, 20, 29, 38, 67, powerball 22, power play two. Good luck. Several new movies and shows debuting just in time for Thanksgiving. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. One new movie opening this week may get you in the mood for Thanksgiving or just happy that you're not stuck in this family. The Human stars Beanie Feldstein, Amy Schumer, Stephen Young, and Richard Jenkins in a tense, funny, and dark drama. Jenkins telling me this family may not be that different from your own. They make horrible mistakes. They do, they, they say mean things to each other. But, you know, I think if we saw a film of our own Thanksgiving dinner, we'd be a little surprised. And uh, it may not be exactly what you think it is. The Humans is in select theaters and streaming on Showtime tomorrow. Elle Fanning is looking forward to feasting this Thanksgiving after spending a lot of time eating dirt during the new season of The Great. Her character, Catherine the Great, is pregnant with a craving for soil. But she and star Nicholas Holt tell me she wasn't actually eating Earth. That's like Oreos. It was like, you know, something, I don't know, the equivalent in London. Yeah, we know Oreos. <laughs> 
they were. What is this biscuit you talk of? (laughs) Season two of The Great is out now on Hulu. Actor Eddie Redmayne was nominated for an Oscar for playing a transgender character in 2015's The Danish Girl. Now he says playing the part was a mistake. He tells the Sunday Times he wouldn't take the role today because he realizes more actors from marginalized groups deserve a seat at the table. And happy birthday today to Miley Cyrus. The singer and actress is 29, while ABC's own Robin Roberts turning 61. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, it's 457 and 43 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, closing arguments set to resume in this morning in the trial of the three men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery. And a quick look, oh, nope, ahead on GMSA at six, <laughs> how you can enjoy all your favorites this holiday season without worrying about your waistline. And checking Transguide right now, see how things are looking out there. Some flashing lights, 410 Culebra area. We'll find out what's going on out there. Coming up in a traffic update with Stephen Cavazos. First look this morning right here on GMSA. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, attorneys are making their final statements to persuade the jury in the case of the killing of Ahmad Arbery. Back here at home outside with live cam, the main headline is clear and cold. Down to 43 here in town. I'm wondering how much colder it is in the outlying areas. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Tuesday. This is November 23rd. Hi, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I packed a jacket for now and I packed a sweater for later. It's chilly out there for sure. Mike, do we warm up at all this afternoon? Oh, yeah, quite a bit. I was going to say you probably won't need the sweater later on this afternoon because we're going to be gaining a good 30, maybe through close to 35 degrees in some areas. Uh, it's one of those days. Yeah, hopefully, well, kids don't have school today. I was going to say that's where you get it stuffed in the backpack, but we're at 41 right now. Uh, the air is very dry. Two points down to 34. And notice how there's a little bit of a breeze out there. Yep, we have wind chill to talk about. Yeah, and then look at the uh, temperature. We're going to make it up to 73 later on this afternoon. So it will definitely be on the warm side of things. Have a few high clouds out there. The aquifer yesterday's reading dropped down four tenths of a foot. Allergens got kind of a whole uh, shopping list out there. Mold, grass, juniper, pigweed. Most everything's on the light side except for mold. So getting back to cold temperatures, a little bit of a breeze. We do have a wind chill. Feels like 37 out at the airport right now, 33, Balverde, and 29. Ooh, that just makes you shiver thinking about 29 in Kerrville right now is the uh, wind chill temperature. And uh, we do actually have just some freezing readings. Actually, it did hit freezing in Fredericksburg earlier, now 33, but uh, freezing in Junction as well as Ozona. And yeah, there's, again, some of those wind chill temperatures to deal with. It's funny because it's going to be almost, well, shirt sleeves later on this afternoon as well as tomorrow, then back to jacket weather. So keep an eye on your toes this week. Partly cloudy skies, warmer today, and then tomorrow, warmer. It is going to be humid, and we might see a couple of showers late tomorrow night. Going into Thanksgiving, it is going to be wet. We're going to have the front moving through early in the day, and then that's going to... A lot of computer models are getting the rain out of here fairly early in the day, but it's going to be a definitely a wet morning, windy, and then it's going to be cooling down throughout the afternoon. So we'll start off warmer and then drop down later on in the day. And then the weekend, it's going to be chilly, especially uh, Friday morning. We do have a couple of showers around here on Saturday. A closer look at the long Thanksgiving holiday weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Anything going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, make sure you check those tire pressures as well before you get on the roadways. Uh, let's take a look right here. Loop 4 Tannic Kulebda is going to be the problem spot at this hour. Now, what we're seeing are some flashing lights out there and some road flares. Now, that's because a crash has been detected in that area. Right now, traffic is moving through that area pretty freely. However, it does look like the exit ramp there is being impacted. Let's see how the lanes are looking on the map right now. And as we take a look, we don't see any stretch of red or orange, yellow showing any slowdowns, but that's right in the southbound lanes of 410 at Military Drive where that crash came in. We're going to continue to watch that pretty closely throughout the morning. Morning. Yesterday was quite the quiet day because given the fact many people are out on holiday, uh, but for if you're going to be hitting out the roads for the next few moments, uh, you won't really find any too much of a big slowdown at this hour. Seeing a little bit of a build up there along I-10 eastbound. We'll get to that a little bit later on, but right now if you are traveling into San Antonio, it's pretty much green across the board. No issues are going to impact that morning drive time. 24 minutes from I-10 and Bernie, 25 from 281 and Bulverde, and we're looking at 25 on 35 from New Brothels. One last look here at Loop 410 at 
Culebra. Now, if you are traveling through this area later this morning, just be sure to watch out for those first responders who are working to improve the roadways. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to find a man they say shot another person in the leg. It happened around 9 p.m. last night on Rampart near San Pedro Avenue on the city's north side. Police say a 21 year old man was shot in the leg. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police say the 19 year old suspect ran away from the scene and at last check has not been found. Police did not give a detailed description of the suspect yet and so far have not provided details of what led up to that shooting. San Antonio police trying to get more details behind a deadly shooting that happened on the west side last night. Happened just before 10 p.m. on Cub Path and Tiger Way, just north of Petranco. SAPD has not released many details, but officers did say one person was killed and one person is in custody. Our Katrina Weber will have more details on the victim coming up this morning at 5:30. Another round of closing arguments expected today in the Georgia court case involving the killing of Ahmad Arbery. Also at the courthouse, there are new concerns about demonstrators outside. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. Jury deliberations are expected to begin today in the trial of three white men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery. The judge is moving deliberations to an interior room of the courthouse, concerned about jurors hearing protesters outside. What do we want? Justice! A defense attorney called for a mistrial because of the demonstrations. There was a truck carrying a coffin with the names of the defendants on it. The judge denied the motion, allowing closing arguments to resume. Travis McMichael, his father Gregory, and William Bryan are accused of chasing down and murdering Arbery in Georgia last year. Their lawyers say the men had reasonable suspicion to believe Arbery had stolen from a construction site before the encounter, arguing that the killing was justified under a citizen's arrest law at the time. And so he's done what he thinks the law allows him to do. Arbery was never seen stealing from the construction site, but a defense attorney called Arbery a recurring intruder and then said this about Arbery. Turning Ahmad Arbery into a victim after the choices that he made does not reflect the reality of what brought Ahmad Arbery to Satilla Shores in his khaki shorts with no socks to cover his long dirty toenails. Arbery's mother was heard saying, wow, before she left the courthouse. I sat there for the last two weeks and let them dehumanize my son. The prosecution then beginning its closing argument, claiming Arbery was targeted because of his race. And they made their decision to attack Ahmaud Arbery in their driveways because he was a black man running down the street. If you are the initial unjustified aggressor, you don't get to claim self-defense. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. Here at home, homeless resource hubs were created as a pandemic necessity throughout San Antonio, but now they're here to stay. The hubs create a centralized resource for things like medical care, behavioral health services, employment opportunities, and housing looking and housing rather. Looking at data from the Corazon Resource Hub from June when the hub opened to the following month, July, the number of people put into housing of some kind doubled. By opening these resource hubs, the city was able to identify a problem they didn't know they had when it came to helping the homeless population. What we're seeing is that people are becoming more engaged and interested in figuring out what could be a next level beyond the state of homelessness that they're presently experiencing. Right now, there are only two homeless resource hubs, one at Corazon, one at Harper's Chapel in order to open more. The other organizations will need to step in and offer help. At the moment, the majority of resources are focused downtown, but the hope is to have hubs in every district. And there are more, there is more help out there for people who need homes. Sam Ministries just received thousands of dollars to give back to those in need. The Texas Bar Foundation gave the organization $17,500. Sam Ministries reporting they will use the money to help homeless people. That maybe just for a few hundred dollars to, to clear an old fine or a fee or to get a birth certificate or something like that um, to address a legal need, um, that can prevent somebody from either obtaining housing or maintaining employment that helps them to retain housing that they have. And we are told anyone who is homeless and works with SAM Ministries can benefit from that grant.
509, 43 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to tell you more about Twitter's new live shopping feature. Preparations underway for one of the biggest Thanksgiving meals in the city. We'll check in with the Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner. And it is Thanksgiving week. Taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting the day at 43 degrees. It's going to be chilly all morning and uh, it will get nicer throughout the day. We'll be right back. The biggest feast of the year now just two days away. Volunteers with the Royal Humanist Thanksgiving dinner are working extra hard to make sure the community is fed. And just like last year, Meals on Wheels will deliver the food. Organizers are hoping to give out 12,500 meals, and you can expect the KSET team will be there on Thursday as well. Attention all artists, you can now submit work for the 7th Annual Citywide Art Contest. Any art that's selected will be featured as the visual representation for the 35th Annual MLK March and Legacy Celebration. This year's theme is Free to Be. Anybody who lives in Bear County can join. Just email arts at sanantonio.gov. The subject line should say 2022 MLK Poster Contest. You have until Wednesday, December 8th. And for more details on the guidelines for the posters, you can head over to our website at kset.com. 513, now down to 41 degrees. And still ahead, TikTok releasing its TV app to more devices. We're going to tell you which ones are included. When it comes to love, it's been a rough journey. I'm very excited to be seeing them again. I have to go back into the dating pool, and I'm pretty sure there's pee in it. This is my first blind date. I feel like I'm a school girl again. I have a huge sex drive now. It could go really well, it could go really bad. The only way I'm gonna know is if I try. 90 Day The Single Life, streaming on Discovery Plus. This is the dimension of imagination. Ordinary tissues burn when Theo blows. So Dad bought Puffs Plus Lotion and rescued his nose. With up to 50% more lotion, Puffs brings soothing softness and relief. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. In today's Tech Bites, Twitter is hosting its first shopping live stream, the latest social media giant to join the trend. Twitter's event, set for this Sunday, is a collaboration with Walmart. It's being described as a 30-minute variety show featuring electronics, home goods, apparel, and much more. Next, TikTok is rolling out on more smart TVs, including Google and Android TV, as well as some LG and Samsung smart TVs. The move is seen as an effort to put TikTok in more direct competition with rival YouTube. And Uber is allowing marijuana users who get a little hungry to multitask. Uber and a Canadian cannabis retailer are joining forces to allow people to order marijuana on Uber Eats. But for now, the service is only offered in Ontario, Canada. This joint operation sounds dope. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Really? Really? <laughs> I mean, I know we do it too sometimes. Yeah. But he, Andrew. He went there. <laughs> he did. That little smirk. Although smirk, smirks are okay too. Yes. Hey, Stephen Cavazos, good morning. What's up over there in the traffic lab? Well, Mark, Seth, we are keeping a very close eye here off Loop 410 at Goulet, but those flashing lights have not gone away. Let's take a closer look and see what uh, TransGuide camera is showing us at this hour. We have been seeing traffic that has been moving through the highway pretty smoothly, and it does look like this crash right here may have been on the exit ramp. We're going to continue to watch that throughout the morning. We do have, it uh, looks like those flashing lights may have just... Uh, turned off so we may be seeing this wrapping up right now but still some road flares out there let's take you to the map and see what we're looking like where that's been pinpointed loop 410 southbound at uh, Glibra, pardon me southbound at military drive is where that crash was detected but again it's not impacting the traffic we have been seeing a lot of green in that area and it does look like those first responders may have just cleared up so some good news out there let's take a quick wider look at the map and show you how tuesday morning is shaping up not seeing a lot of issues out there at this hour but let's bring your attention right over here to I-10 eastbound because we saw a little bit of a buildup when we last talked to you guys. There's some road cleanup that's supposed to be going on out there a little bit later this morning, but uh, it's unsure if tech side crews got a head start on that. That was supposed to be happening today from 9 in the uh, morning to 3 in the afternoon along I-10 eastbound and lead to the rolling single lane closures from FM 1516 to File Road. But again, we will check with our friends at TransGuy to find out if there is uh, if they started early. But uh, one last look here at 410 at Culebra. Looks like we are seeing some updates there and it looks like that crash has just cleared out, guys. Thank you, Stephen.
Thank you. What do you have behind you? It's a really cool picture. Just a lot of high wispy clouds. No, it's not a falling sun or meteorites. Just a... Uh, huh. Just really nice looking, just a little bit of moisture aloft in the atmosphere. And those are usually, when they're, those clouds are that high, usually little tiny ice crystals. And sometimes you don't even see that uh, that cloudiness way, way up high in the atmosphere. But there's still some of those ice crystals up there. And that's where we see those rings around the sun and or the moon sometimes. All right, this morning we've just got a few clouds hanging around. It's kind of a, a little bit of a blurry picture there. But uh, wind chill temperatures, yep, we're dealing with that this morning. 37 here in town. Feels like 32 burning stage and... Kerrville, you win the prize this morning. 28 is the wind chill. Everybody is pretty darn chilly out there. Now, it's one of those where coat this morning, you won't need it. It's almost going to be shirt sleeves by this afternoon. And we'll have a few more clouds kind of hanging around here. Um, we'll still see more sunshine today. And I think we'll see the most sunshine of the week today, probably a little bit more on uh, Friday. Then uh, clouds continue to kind of thicken up overnight tonight, and we're going to have basically a cloudy day tomorrow. And the humidity is really going to start to work its way back into the picture overnight tonight. It's it's going to start to return this afternoon. It's not like you're going to really notice it that much, but by tomorrow morning, we'll notice it and then throughout the day uh, tomorrow. Also, by tomorrow night, a couple of these showers are possible around here, just a, a few of them, and this is as that front approaches. Now, this computer model, uh, it's got a couple of showers early Thursday morning, and then the line of rain. Now, this one actually really doesn't have a whole lot of rain and gets it on out of here very, very quickly. And I don't think we clear out necessarily by Thursday afternoon, but the rain will be moving on out of here. Now, again, that's just one computer model. Others keep it around a little bit longer, but basically it's just going to be first half of the day on Thursday when we see the rain around here, and then it should continue to clear out. This is one of those longer range computer models. Again, some showers late tomorrow night, and this one tends to, again, broad brush things, but it uh, pretty much same solution that by, say, noon, early afternoon, most of that rain is out of the area moving down to the southeast. And Friday will still keep a lot of clouds around. I think a little bit of sunshine mixed in here. And then Saturday is when we have our next rain chance that's going to be moving on in, and that may stick around into um, Sunday a little bit. And this particular computer model does have some of that rain hanging around here down to the south of it. And the reason for that is that low off to the west. So that thing's just going to kind of hang out there to the west of us. We get the first front moving through here during the day on Thursday, and that's going to knock temperatures down. But notice how that thing is still sitting out there uh, to the west of us. So it just sort of hangs out a little bit. We get a break in the rain on Friday. Then that starts to move in and throw some energy in our direction. That's what's going to keep the uh, the rain around or bring the rain back into the picture, I should say, by Saturday. Um, about a 30% chance of rain on Saturday. 67 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, a lot of high clouds hanging around here, and then 73 for high temperature later on today. So again, jackets this morning and then just about, well, I don't know if I'd go short. Well, maybe shorts and flip-flops this afternoon. What do you think, Mark? Not for me. <laughs> no. And then 75 tomorrow. Very warm and humid tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be kind of an upside-down day on Thursday. Warmer, more humid in the morning, and then windy in the afternoon. Temperatures will drop down. Rain should come to an end by the afternoon. And Friday looks like a pretty good day. A couple of showers on Saturday. I guess you could. I mean, you do a sweatshirt or jacket and then shorts and mm. flip-flops. Well, 70, with, the, with the jacket but for 70, me. No, but 73, I mean, that's not bad. Bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. But I, I get cold in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> We're cold in here right now. 523, about 41 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Taylor Swift's new version of All Too Well sets a record, and Kevin Smith reacts to a documentary on himself. Taylor Swift and Kevin Smith are in their entertainment spotlight today. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Taylor Swift has set a unique record. Universal Music says her new version of All Too Well, which clocks in at over 10 minutes, is the longest song ever to top the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The previous record holder was Don McLean's American Pie at a mere 8 minutes 42 seconds. You can see this intensity in his eyes. This is what I've been waiting for my whole life. I want to do this. Kevin Smith is the subject of Clerk, a new documentary about the indie filmmaking icon. And to no one's surprise, he really likes it. I'm not one of those filmmakers like, oh, I don't like when people talk about me. I'm like, oh, I foster the conversation. I love the sound of my own voice. So uh, it was weird to watch the documentary 
and be so into it because I like not only am I a big fan of the subject matter, the guy who does most of the talking in the movie is like my favorite talker on the planet. So I could listen to him for hours. Clerk is now available on digital platforms. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 41 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the latest on President Joe Biden's effort to lower gas prices. About 6 million Americans over the age of 65 are living, living with Alzheimer's. By the year 2050, that number is expected to double. What you could do to make sure you stay mentally sharp as you age. Plus, we're going to tell you about Tiffany and Company's most expensive piece of jewelry you'll ever and about how much it will cost you. And ahead on GMSA at 6, if you're noticing you're paying more for your Thanksgiving meal this year, you're not wrong. We'll share which items are actually costing you the most. Making headlines this morning, President Biden hopes to make a move to lower gas prices today, but it could run into some roadblocks from other nations. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at a cold 41 degrees out there. However, things are expected to warm up. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, November 23rd. Thanks for joining us. Happy Tuesday. Looking forward to some nice weather again. It was pretty nice yesterday. It was. Now the Thanksgiving uh, turkey should be thawing, but this morning we are burr here in South Texas. Yeah, a lot of, uh, well, not, I shouldn't say a lot, but some freezing temperatures out there this morning. And we're also dealing with, yep, a wind chill around a good chunk of the area. Not much of a breeze, but just enough when we've got these temperatures well down in the 40s and 30s. So we're at 41 out there at the airport. The air is still very dry. Dew points down to uh, 34 and that little little bit of a breeze out there. Well, takes these temperatures, which we are freezing right now in Comfort as well as in Kerrville, 34 Bernie Stage in Balverde, and that little bit of a, a wind in places. So wind chill in Kerrville right now is at 28, 37 out there at the airport, 37 in Hilota. So definitely bundle up. And then this afternoon, it's going to be very, very warm. We're going to be gaining 30, in some cases, almost 35 degrees. Mold is moderate, light amounts of grass, juniper, and pigweed. And uh, throughout the rest of today, yep, we make it all the way up to 73. Normal high is right around 70, so we're going to be on the, the warm side of that. And also, as we get into this afternoon, it's not like it's going to be humid, but that'll begin where the humidity begins its return, and that's going to be the case overnight and tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a very mild day, but then we get a front moving through on Thursday. Still looking at some rain chances on Thursday and maybe later on in the weekend. Details on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos. Anything big going on, sir? Hey, Mike. Well, we did start this hour with some issues out on the roadways off 410 at Culebra where there was a crash detected. It looks like things have cleared out and the roads are pretty empty, and we're not complaining about it, especially if you're an early morning commuter. Maybe you plan on heading out of town you're going to have the roads to yourself. So some good news there. As we take a quick look around town, 410 at Bandera, traffic moving smoothly this morning. So again, some good news for our early morning risers. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map and show you how it's looking at this hour. Now, while we see a lot of green on the screen, we have this yellow icon that's popped up there along I-10. What that usually means is that there's some restricted flow uh, through that area, meaning that there's some sort of slowdown or incident that's impacting traffic at this hour. I have checked the trans guide cameras. We've not spotted anything just yet, but we'll continue to keep a close eye on that throughout the morning. Let's take you to those inbound times. If you're traveling to San Antonio in the next few moments, 29 minutes on I-10 from Seguin looking pretty green and 22 minutes coming in from Lavernia and 87, 27 on 37 coming in from Flodesville. Overall, the morning has started off with some issues, but looks like those have resolved. So it gives us some time to talk more construction and we'll take a look at that incident happening along I-10 coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you. Later today, the White House says the president hopes to talk about lowering prices for the American people. CNN's Bear Conway has details on Biden's plan. Gas prices are high. They're too high. The national average is $3.40. That's three cents more than a month ago and $1.29 more than a year ago. 81 cents more than 2019. The American consumer never likes to pay more at the pump. Especially heading into the holidays. But we are focused on doing everything that we can to make sure that American consumers are not bearing the uh, the short end of the stick during these periods. And so that's the, that's what the president's going to be talking about. Today, officials say President Joe Biden is expected to announce his decision to release oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. The hope here is the release would keep a lid on gas prices and relieve some political pressure. Nearly two dozen Democrats in the House and Senate are urging the president to release oil from the reserve. 
But the White House wants this to be a coordinated effort, asking for a simultaneous release of stockpiled oil by large oil consuming nations, including China, India, Japan and South Korea. Still, tapping the SPR is only a short term fix. No president controls the price of gas. Oil is sold on a global market. It is, uh, as we see, as everybody's coming out of COVID, there is a huge uh, increase in demand. The supply has not caught up. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection is issuing a new round of subpoenas. The committee is calling on five Trump allies directly involved in planning the so-called Stop the Steal rallies. It includes longtime Republican operative Roger Stone and radio host Alex Jones. Also receiving a subpoena on Monday, Dustin Stockton and Jennifer Lawrence, who were key players in the Stop the Steal movement after the election. Tayer Budowich, primary political spokesperson for former President Trump, was the final person to get a subpoena. The U.S. Navy is helping with the supply chain backlog in California. The Navy has partnered with the Oxnard Harbor District to help decrease congestion at the Wainimi. As it comes, tangled supply chains have boosted costs and limited the ability, availability of everything from automobiles to clothing to toys. Now, earlier this month, the White House launched a dashboard to track progress in easing the backlog of imported goods. The White House also working to relax trucking regulations and persuade ports and railroads to operate around the clock. 536, 41 degrees. And still ahead, why popular cosmetics companies say they're calling it quits on some social media platforms. And next is Alzheimer's Awareness Month. What doctors say you can do now to stay mentally sharp in your 80s, 90s, and beyond. And taking a look outside with live cam, a cold 41 degrees out there. Definitely grab a jacket this morning, especially if you're spending some time outdoors. But it will warm up. We'll be right back. It is Alzheimer's Awareness Month. Right now, there are about 6 million Americans over the age of 65 living with the disease. And by the year 2050, that number is expected to double. Ursula Perry explains what those who are at risk are doing to stay mentally sharp. For 84-year-old David Albertson and 83-year-old Alan Woods, age is nothing but a number. I don't think about my age. Both may be considered super-agers or have the cognitive function that's comparable to that of an average middle-aged adult. A study from Northwestern University found that those who are super-agers lose brain volume at a slower pace than normally aging adults, putting super-agers at a lower risk for dementia. So, what are super agers doing to keep their minds young? I think that's important to stay active. The risk for developing Alzheimer's disease triples for individuals with a body mass index over 30. Also, challenging your mind can keep it in shape. David does crossword puzzles every day to keep his mind sharp. I've been doing it uh, for over 50 years, uh, probably 60 years. And research found superagers also had a greater circle of friends and family. It's just common sense. You've just got to, got to keep moving. You've got to keep your mind sharp. And if you have family and friends, you're in great shape. Another tip. Indulging in a glass of alcohol can keep your mind young. Northwestern University actually did a study about moderate drinking and found that those who do have 23% less likely risk of developing Alzheimer's. The key though, moderation. If you drink over the recommended amount, you increase your risk for the disease. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. 541. 41 degrees. And so ahead, we'll tell you more about one of the most expensive pieces of jewelry ever that's now for sale at Tiffany & Company. And welcome back. It's 543. In your morning consumer headlines, home sales managed to inch higher last month despite rising prices and dwindling inventory. According to the National Association of Realtors, sales of existing houses, townhomes, condominiums, and co-ops rose 0.8% in October from the previous month. In all, 6.3 million existing homes were sold. That number is down almost 6% from a year ago when pandemic home buying was in its peak. October marked the 116th straight month of rising prices with homes selling at a median price of just shy of $354,000. That's up more than 13% from a year ago. 
Lush Cosmetics is leaving several popular social media platforms to raise awareness about how they damage people's mental health. The company said it will stay on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat until the platforms ensure a safer environment for users. The Trinity Soaps brand said it'll continue to be active on Twitter and YouTube. Lush, a teen favorite, has more than 900 stores nationwide, including 240 across the U.S. and two in San Antonio. The brand has, for a while, used its reach to champion social and environmental causes. And Tiffany and Company just unveiled what it calls its most expensive piece of jewelry ever. And it could be all yours for around $20 million dollars. The World's Fair necklace, that's what it's called, was just unveiled in Dubai. It features 180 carats of diamond set in platinum. The centerpiece is an 80 carat oval flawless D color empire diamond. I don't even know what that is. So <laughs> this empire di diamond was sourced in Botswana, cut and polished in Israel and set in Tiffany's workshop in New York City. Here at home, putting on events, celebrations, and parties has got a lot more challenging because of the pandemic. As parties kick off, one local vendor reminding clients to have some patience and grace for those working behind the scenes. Owner of J. Len Events, uh, Jamie Cook, says everything about their execution has changed due to the delays in items arriving and staffing shortages affecting their industry. Like so many industries, prices have gone up for us too. Staffing has gone down for us too. Inventory has gone down. Supply chain issues are happening to us too. And I think that people do not realize that in the hospitality realm, in our universe, it is devastating. One bride we spoke with says she's had to reschedule her event multiple times and was finally able to get married last month. People are encouraged to be flexible. And let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. One accident cleared, but how are the roads looking now? They're pretty quiet right now. Mark and Stephen, fun fact, I used to work at a jewelry store, so I know a little bit about diamonds. Ah. We'll talk during the break. I don't okay. know, I want to make sure I say the Was right it all thing. like a mom and pop place or a chain? It was a chain. Okay, it interesting. Was a chain. Yeah, so I sold a few diamonds. Uh, great, great, uh, great time. Nice. <laughs> well, See, is couples. traffic sparkling this morning? Traffic <laughs> is quiet. It's a little dull out there right now, but let's take a closer <laughs> look at TransGuide and see how things are shaping up for this Tuesday morning. 35 in Ogolitos. Looks like we're getting a little bit more folks out there this morning. Now, we have spotted some issues, but those have quickly resolved. We really want to bring your attention to the map, though, because uh, TxDOT has listed a crash there off I-10 westbound at Dezavala. However, I've not spotted anything on the TransGuide cameras just yet, but we're going to continue to watch that throughout the morning and see how that may impact the drive time but again not spotting anything just yet but either which way watch out over there let's take you down over here to some bridge work that's been going on since yesterday uh, this is actually happening out at uh, Golubra Road it's such to the full closure out there in the intersection at Loop 410 should be wrapping up on December 6th that's a Monday this is planned for 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning so again make sure that you're planning your routes alternative routes accordingly and as we take a wider look at the map though we still have some of that restricted flow out there along I-10 but it, led, it does look like traffic is moving smoothly through that area. One last look. Looks like we have an issue off US 90 in Ogolitos. We'll take a look at that in just a moment, guys. I have a guess at what 80 karat flawless D color means. Expensive. Uh -huh. <laughs> expensive. expensive. 20 million expensive. expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Something wow. that would have a starring role in like an Ocean's Eleven type movie, right? 80 yeah. karat diamond. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you be afraid to wear that? I, I, absolutely. Oops. No way. Be I afraid mean, to buy it. Yeah, or <laughs> or wear it. I'm sure if you can buy it, you've got, you know, security guard. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably so. heavy, too. This is a beautiful worth $20 million picture, right? <laughs> nice. yeah, be, that's a gorgeous shot. Looks like kind of a watercolor painting. Thank you very much for that one. And uh, we've got a lot of clear skies this morning. Should have a decent looking sunrise this morning. And uh, it's cold out there. You can't get around that. Wind chill 37 in town, 33 at Randolph and uh, 31 right now in Kerrville. Uh, feels like 34 up the road in Balverde. Yesterday we did hit 71. The average normal high temperature is 69 right now and we are going to be we're above that going to be above that again today a lot of mid and upper 70s around the area in and around the metropolitan area so it's going to go from jackets to shirt sleeves later on today now as far as the humidity obviously to get temperatures this cold you got really dry air in place and that's what we have right now mostly clear skies and for the most part light wind a little puff of a breeze out there and it's going to stay 
the humidity is going to stay very low throughout the day. But what we're going to be seeing is here comes the return or the beginning of the return of the humidity by later on this evening. So that gets pumped on in here overnight. It is going to be I mean, it's not going to be like we're up in the, you know, sweating stage or anything like that as far as humidity, but you'll definitely notice it tomorrow and then it will continue to increase throughout the day tomorrow. That then is going to set the stage for uh, some of the showers that are going to be coming on in here and that's going to start probably tomorrow night late and then first part of the day on Thursday. Here's a well, maybe a couple of low clouds off there to the west. We have a few of them kind of scooting through here overnight, but again, most of the clear skies, just a couple of uh, clouds. We'll see a lot of high clouds today as well. Upstream, there's not much going on. Uh, you can see this bit of a, a northwesterly flow right here, and that's sort of associated with the front that's going to be moving on through. But what's really going to be kind of impacting our weather is that low off the Baja of California. It's one of those cutoff lows, so it, it's literally, as the name implies, it is cut off from the main flow of the uh, steering winds, the jet stream, if you will. So that thing just kind of sits out there to the west of us. We get the front to move through here, this northwesterly flow on Thursday, but that still is not moving on through. So it's just kind of hanging out there a little bit and then by Saturday it's going to start to really throw some energy in our direction. It's still going to pump a lot of high cloudiness in here so it's not like we're ever going to really clear out all that much going in through the weekend but that will then move uh, move in our direction and also like I said throw, throw some energy in here and that's going to give us the chance of rain then by Saturday maybe even lingering into uh, the first part of the day Sunday 67 degrees today at noon partly cloudy skies high temperature up to 73 and we're going to have a lot of high cloudiness out there. Then tomorrow it's going to be much, much milder. We'll start off in the upper 50s and then end up in the mid 70s. Then late tomorrow night, actually early on uh, Thursday, the front moves on through here. Might see a couple of showers developing late tomorrow night and I jump past that graphic. Darn it all. Well, we'll just talk about this picture. It is going to be very nice on uh, Thursday as far as temperatures starting off in the mid 60s, but then dropping down throughout the day will clear out later on in the or rain will clear out later on in the afternoon. It's going to be windy on Thursday. Friday is going to be the better day, good shopping day, and then a couple of showers on Saturday and kind of cool over the weekend. So very good. We'll take all the changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep you on your toes. Yeah, thank you. 551, about 41 degrees. And Disney's latest animated musical feature is an extended family living in the mountains of Columbia. We're going to have a special first look next. Lottery numbers, pick three, 164, Fireball 7. Your daily four number is 7927, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 2, 11, 18, 29, 30. Texas 2 step, 8, 12, 27, 29, bonus ball 23. And your Powerball number is 7, 20, 29, 38, 67, Powerball 22, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're talking about the Christmas tree crunch and many other headlines on GMA, including, of course, the update on at least five people dead and dozens injured in Wisconsin. The suspect of that attack expected to face a judge today. We are live there with the latest and we'll tell you what we're learning about the victims. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Hola, casita. Encanto gives us a magical house in Colombia and the extended family that lives there, all bestowed with magical gifts except daughter Maribel. I'm not super strong like Luisa. The donkey's got out again. On it! Oh. Or effortlessly perfect like Senorita Perfecta Isabella. It's a really hard thing at, you know, at Mirabel's age at 15 to train yourself to kind of think that you belong and that everything's gonna be okay and that you yourself are worthwhile, oof, that's a hard one for any anybody, but especially a teenage girl. Those with gifts can find they quickly become responsibilities. It's a role that you step into, you didn't ask for it, it's just something that is bestowed upon you and then right. you must play it. Even though you are, you know, exhibit something that you're passionate about or good at, you still need room to experiment and to grow and to fall, and then that's okay. Lin-Manuel Miranda helped write the story and contributed eight original songs. I remember writing the opening number, The Family Magical, before we had a second act or a third act. Here we go, here's everyone you need to know, here are all the chess pieces. With so many magical pieces, it can be tough figuring out where you fit. 
gift or no gift, I am just as special as the rest of my family. Sure. Who wants more pink? Higher. All right, guys, where do I drop the wagon? Maybe your gift is being in denial. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Don't forget about the Share the Shoes drive. We've teamed up with the San Antonio Police Department to try to gather as many shoes as possible for children in need. All the shoes donated will benefit Good Samaritan Community Services next month, just in time for the holidays. You can make a donation through November 30th, and we hope you do. Ahead in our next hour, GMSA, as we get closer to Thanksgiving, we have some simple habits you can change to avoid feel like you've overeaten during the holidays. Plus, a local UPS employee arrested, accused of stealing prescription drugs from packages. How authorities were able to catch him. And what you need to know about trash pickup this week due to the holidays, so you're not stuck with all those leftovers. And Trans Guide right now, we do have some folks on the road early this morning out there. Still have some flashing lights. I-10 at De Zavala out there right now. Stephen Cavazos is keeping an eye on your very early morning commute on this Tuesday, November 23rd. We'll be right back. You're watching GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a chilly 41 degrees out there. Definitely grab a jacket for these morning hours, but it's expected to warm up a little bit later in the afternoon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. And just like that, it is Tuesday, November 23rd. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great week so far. The weather was definitely nice yesterday and today it looks like it will be the same. It's feeling Thanksgiving like out there for, you know, mid to late November. Mm -hmm. 41 degrees is better than the alternative, which would be what? 61, 71 <laughs> degrees. And humid. Well, that's where we're going to be later on today, though. Uh -huh. Up to 70, low 70s. And then tomorrow is not going to be very Thanksgiving-ish feeling. I don't know if those are words, but hey, we'll go with it. Uh, but things are going to be changing then by Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's really cold out there this morning. We've got a lot of clear skies and temperature right now is at 40 freezing and comfort. Kerrville was at freezing. It's kind of um, fluctuated just a little bit there. Then you got the wind chills to deal with. 33 in Balverde. Randolph feels like uh, 33 also in Kerrville and uh, 37 out there at the airport. So definitely bundle up. But then, like I said, we're going to really warm up throughout the day. Mold is on the moderate side. Grass, juniper, and pigweed are all low. And uh, we're going to be right around 40, maybe upper 30s here in town. Of course, that little bit of a wind chill this morning. Got a couple of clouds out there, maybe some high clouds. We're going to keep a fair amount of high clouds around not only today, but the, uh, the next few days through the weekend. 67 at noon, so already almost up to the normal high, which is 69 degrees. Then we're going to be a little bit warmer than that later on this afternoon up into the, the low 70s. And like I said, it is going to be uh, kind of a different story tomorrow. However, sneak peek at Thanksgiving, we're going to start off in the mid 60s and then drop down throughout the day with the front moving through. Yes, and still got some decent rain chances on Thanksgiving. First part of the day, rain's going to be moving out by the afternoon. Friday looks pretty good. If you're heading out shopping, it is going to be breezy. It is going to be cool. The rest of the weekend forecast is coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Anything big causing problems out there? Uh, we're seeing some flashing lights out here, Mike. I-10 at De Zavala. We told you about this a little bit earlier, but we did not have a shot at TransGuide. Uh, this is actually a crash that we're looking at here from this view. It looks like it could be on the Axis Road. Very dark out there to exactly tell what what we're looking at this morning, but we're seeing that traffic is moving through some of these lanes, so hopefully that's not going to be impacting anyone's drive time. But let's go ahead and show you how the map is looking right at this hour. I 10 westbound at Days of All, where that crash has been detected. You can see in both directions in east and west, we're not seeing any buildup. However, we're going to be keeping a very close eye on this. We're seeing a little bit of a buildup there along Days of All, but nothing too drastic that's going to be causing those delays for your early morning drive. Let's take a wider look at the map and see how Tuesday traffic is looking pretty green, not much green on the screen, which again, we love to see that as we start a new day and nothing big is going to cause any problems out there. If you're driving to San Antonio, well, 37 from Pleasanton, it's a pleasant drive with 28 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area, 16 minutes from 35 in Lytle and 19 minutes coming in from Highway 90 in Castroville. So overall, the morning has not seen any big delays or stretch of reds that would cause any problems, but we're going to continue to watch our eyes, uh, keep our eyes out on here where we see these flashing lights at I-10 at Days of Allah. Mark Stephanie. New this morning, a man shot and killed overnight has been identified as 67 year old Daniel Sales. The shooting happened just before 10 p.m. on Cub Path and Tiger Way, just north of Tranco Road on the far west side. 
SAPD hasn't released many details, but officers did say one person is in custody. SAPD trying to find a man they say shot another person in the leg last night on the city's north side. Happened around 9 o'clock at an apartment complex on West Rampart between San Pedro and McCullough Avenue. Police say a 21 year old man was shot in the leg. He was taken to a hospital in stable condition. The 19 year old suspect ran away from the scene at last report has not been found. Police did not give a detailed description of the suspect and not provide details on what led up to the shooting. San Antonio police have arrested the man accused of shooting another person at an apartment complex downtown on Sunday evening. 28 year old Daniel Perez is facing an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon charge. Investigators say the shooting happened just after 6 p.m. on Sunday at an apartment complex on Broadway. And police say the shooting was a result of an argument inside one of the units. A 44 year old man was shot. He was taken to the hospital and at last check he was in critical condition. Police arrested Perez later at another location. Police are looking. Police are looking for two men in connection with a shooting outside delicious tamales over on the west side. Happened just before five yesterday afternoon on Culebra near North Hamilton Avenue. Police believe two men saw a man driving in the parking lot and went up to tell him he was driving too fast. That's when the men started fighting. Police say one of the suspects shot the victim. The man shot remains in critical condition. And to other news now, since Thanksgiving is on Thursday, if you get your trash picked up that day, it will be picked up a day earlier this week due to the holiday. So Wednesday and Thursday collections for recycling organics and garbage will be collected tomorrow. There will be no garbage pickup on Thursday. And if you get your recycling and garbage picked up on Friday, there is no change to your schedule. Preparations underway for the Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner Thursday and volunteers are working extra hard to make sure the community is fed. Potatoes are being mashed, meats being chopped, and just like last year, Meals on Wheels will deliver. Organizers are hoping to give out 12,500 meals this year. Our GMSA team will be at the event Thursday morning starting bright and early at 5 a.m. Americans are preparing for more traditional Thanksgiving celebrations this year after many families chose to forego or scale down their gatherings in 2020. Numerous travelers opting to fly to and from their destinations for the holiday. The TSA expects the Sunday after Thanksgiving to be the busiest travel day of the year with an estimated 2.4 million passengers. ABC's Morgan Norwood has some tips for those of you heading to the airport. After a slow Thanksgiving for travel last year due to COVID, this year, passengers are coming back in a big way. So it's going to be about twice as busy as it was in 2020, pretty close to where we were in 2019 for Thanksgiving. So if you're one of those taking a trip over Thanksgiving, here's some tips to help you get through it. First, don't wait until the day of your flight to see if your trip is on schedule. Check your flight status online early days ahead of time. You know, very often when these cancellations do happen, they do happen one two or three days in advance, and you'd much rather find out about them from the comfort of your own home than in the airport. If you need a rental car and you haven't booked one yet, do it now. We're expecting rental car prices to be very high over the holiday weekend at around $80 a day. Um, and availability could also be a concern here. So if you haven't booked your rental car, you want to make sure that you have that reserved before you depart for Thanksgiving. If your flight does get canceled or significantly delayed, you're entitled to a cash refund under federal law, but you could also negotiate for a different trip. But if you go into the situation and say, hey, listen, I know I'm entitled to a refund, but instead of this refund, I'd rather be rebooked on this itinerary that I found. Nine times out of 10, the airline agents are going to comply. Finally, if you still want to travel for Thanksgiving but you haven't booked yet, experts say keep an eye out for some last minute deals to short haul international destinations. That's because there's no demand for international flights for Thanksgiving. If you love your family but you love a beach and a margarita a little bit more, hey, you might have a good deal waiting for you. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. And there are two opportunities today to get your COVID vaccine or flu shot for you or your child. Today, Metro Health will have a pop-up clinic at the Divine Providence Church on Old Pearsall Road from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There will also be a pop-up clinic at the Children's Rehabilitation Institute on Quarry Park near Wurzbach Parkway and Hero Stadium. All three COVID vaccines will be available at both clinics as well as flu shots. They will also offer the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. 
And right now on KSET.com, our KSET News Team is KSET Now News Team is looking for viewers to share their Thanksgiving traditions. They have a poll online that you can take and answer questions like, do you prefer turkey, ham, or tamales? Or do you prefer to shop on Black Friday or Cyber Monday? You can also leave a custom response. So just look for this story on our homepage and you can catch KSET News Now every day at 11 a.m. online or on any streaming device. Can we do it all? Can we? Can we have all, all that? Like all of the above? Yeah. I, I mean, don't see why not. Turkey, ham, and tamales? Yes. I mean, it'd be a buffet, right? Yeah. Stephen, are you cool with that? Yeah, okay. just small portions, but all right. we can Big do portions. it. And I'm all about shopping on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I mean, yeah. we've got to find the deals, we'll right? Just, we'll just take it all. All right, 609, about 41 degrees. <laughs> and still ahead on GMSA, the Spurs, we want them to take it all, but they're fighting hard, and they fought hard last night against the Phoenix Suns, but couldn't get a handle on them. We're going to have the highlights from last night's game coming up in sports. You probably already heard Thanksgiving is going to cost you more this year. The items you're paying the most for are coming up after the break. Hmm. Will it be turkey, ham, or tamales? Or maybe all of the above? Maybe, <laughs> maybe we should settle on one entree. Yeah, maybe with that. Taking a look outside with live cam kind of feels like Thanksgiving this morning, but things will change a little bit. We'll be right back. And welcome back at 613. The cost of putting Thanksgiving dinner on the table is going up. That's according to the results of two surveys. In this morning's Consumer Watch, CNN's Jen Sullivan takes a closer look at what items will cost you the most. A record-breaking meal. The price to put Thanksgiving dinner on the table this 2021 will be 14% higher than last year. That 14% increase is the largest increase we've ever seen in the market basket. An informal survey from the American Farm Bureau Federation finds dinner for a family of 10 will cost an average of $53.31. That's $6.41 more than last year. Economists blame the increase on inflation, supply chain issues, and a surge of demand for food during the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of us were staying at home and using cooking as a form of entertainment. Turkey prices saw the biggest increase, up 24% since last year. One caveat is that the survey was carried out before grocery stores started advertising promotional prices, which happened later this year. When you start looking at those promotional prices kicking in, we're starting to see significant declines uh, in, in the cost of turkey. Other staples are seeing an increase. Pie crusts up 20 percent and dinner rolls up 15 percent. A similar survey from the Department of Agriculture also estimates that Americans will spend more this Thanksgiving, but only 5 percent more. And when it comes to availability, Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack says you'll still find what you need on shelves. There may be uh, situations uh, throughout the country where uh, a particular grocery store may not have as many turkeys as necessary, but at the end of the day, there's going to be plenty of food uh, on Thanksgiving plates. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 614. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I saw flashing lights out there. They're still out there, Mark and Steph. As we take a look at Transguide I-10 at Days of Allah is a problem spot this morning. However, we're not seeing so much of an impact when it comes to that drive time right now. Traffic is still moving through there pretty smoothly, uh, but we still have those first responders working to clear a crash scene. Let's take a look at the map right now. It's still pretty much green in that area in those westbound lanes at Days of Allah where that crash was detected. Thankfully, not causing any issues for that morning drive time, but given the fact that it is getting closer to to morning rush. We'll likely see a few more folks out there, so just make sure you watch out for them. You see those flashing lights. Let's take a look here, though. We have some debris on the roadway on Loop 1604 westbound at Lock and Terror Parkway. I was checking the Transguide cameras. It is still very dark out there, so make sure that you're driving carefully and be on the lookout for that debris that has been detected. Wider look at the map does show it's still pretty quiet on the map and the screen, so we're not seeing a lot of issues this morning, but of course, we're going to continue to watch this crash closely at I-10 at Days Vala. Really quick look around town before we jump over. We do have have US 90 at Nogolito, so we can see that traffic is getting a little bit busier in some other spots, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mike, turkey, ham, or tamales, mm, or all of, all the, of above. the above? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yes. Yes. What's wrong with the sampler platter, right? Yeah, yeah nice. just a Way little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. In mo everything in moderation. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Although I think uh, turkey kind of does better for the sandwich afterwards. Tamales oh, on the sandwich. That, well, that, Although I like ham. That idea, right? Yeah. I'm a ham man. You, you could do the ham sandwich. I'm a ham and you man. could do ham salad. I mean, you could mm -hmm. have all sorts of options. That's true. And then, and, uh, kind of tamales I'm mixed with eggs. How about that? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. 
Mm. Actually, Thank my you. husband did that last night. Wow, talk about We're just going off on a tangent. Salivating, <laughs> salivating here. I know. All right, look behind that graphic. Look at that beautiful sunrise. That's absolutely gorgeous out there. It's cold. Temperature stands at 40 and then a huge warm up throughout the day. We're going to make it up to 73. So coat this morning and I think probably get away with it uh, this afternoon. Get away without it this afternoon, I should say. And uh, as far as boy, pretty pictures. Look at that one up there. This was over the weekend right around Canyon Lake. Oh, that's pretty. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Back to this beautiful sunrise out there. Just spectacular. Always a nice way to start the day when it looks like that. Uh, it's cold out there, not only in the thermometer, but wind chill, what it actually feels like to your body. Uh, 37 here in town, 33 is the wind chill. Randolph, Ball 30, it feels like 32 degrees right now. There's not much of a breeze, but it doesn't take much when you get these temperatures that are so uh, chilly. And we've got obviously bone dry air, but humidity is going to start to work its way back into the picture then later on this afternoon. It's not like you're going to really feel it, but just won't be as as crisp and dry and then overnight into tomorrow we're going to have more humidity but then that drops off Thursday as the front moves on through here Friday going to be really nice again. We'll still have a lot of high clouds hanging around here and that's one thing we're going to really keep now throughout the rest of the weekend and then humidity starts to work its way back in here somewhat by uh, later on in the weekend, but that's also going to then help out with another rain chance by the uh, the weekend. So here's the uh, computer model and uh, yeah, it's got a lot of these high clouds in here. I think we see more sunshine today, but we will definitely cloud up overnight. And tomorrow we're going to start to see a chance for some rain, not necessarily in the morning, but by later on in the evening hours and then overnight into Thursday, the chance for some rain. But again, got to point out, this is that computer model that kind of colors things in with a broad brush, so it's not going to be raining everywhere, but there is a fairly decent shot uh, going through at least the first portion of the day on Thanksgiving. But most everything now is pushing the rain out of here fairly soon. So looks like by probably midday, it's going to be ending in the hill country. The rain will and then in early afternoon here in town and that will continue to push on out of here. Still plenty of clouds around on Friday. Then another rain chance moves in here by Saturday and that could actually linger into Sunday. And the reason for that is that low is still going to be sitting out there to the west of us. And so it's just going to kind of kind of wait, kind of kind of stew, if you will and then it's going to start to work its way in here and that's what's going to give us the chance of rain again by Saturday perhaps lingering into the first part of the day on Sunday today 67 degrees at noon big warm up throughout the morning and with all these clear skies and dry air it's going to warm up really quickly and then 73 for a high temperature later on today still some of those high clouds out there then it's going to feel more humid tomorrow morning and it will make it up to 75 degrees nowhere near as cool will be almost 20 degrees warmer by tomorrow morning uh, a couple of showers late front moves through then early on Thursday. We will have rain primarily first portion of the day on Thursday. Then that will come to an end. Temperatures will drop throughout the day on Thursday and then another cold start Friday. Only 60 some sunshine mixed in another chance of rain on Saturday. And of course, Hanukkah begins on Sunday. Mark. Thank you very much, Mike. Spurs trying to avoid a five game losing streak last night, hosting the Suns on a roll right now. Despite getting off to a good start, Spurs with a trail at the end of the first quarter, 24-20. In the second, Suns outscore the Spurs 33-24, and San Antonio falls behind 57-44. Fast forward to the fourth, Spurs try to rally from an 18-point deficit. Lonnie Walker drives for the jam. San Antonio down by 11. Then Murray finds Pirtle along the baseline for the floater, and suddenly the Spurs are within five, 100 to 95 Phoenix pulls away again. The Spurs get within three points, but they can't corral the jump ball in crunch time. And San Antonio falls 115 111 for head coach Greg Popovich. It's the same old story. Turnovers, assists, boards. Uh, we played with them. Uh, we scored in the paint uh, very well, but we didn't shoot the threes. And uh, that's the name of the game in today's NBA. Next up, Spurs host the Hawks tomorrow night at 7.30. U UTSA Roadrunners say they couldn't have gone 11-0 without you, the fans, this season. So tickets for the Conference USA Championship game at the Dome on December 3rd will be free for UTSA students. Roadrunners won the Conference USA West Division with their dramatic come-from-behind last-second game-winning touchdown. Frank Harris to Oscar Cardenas that was tipped, still caught.
Before they play for the championship, they must face North Texas and Denton on Saturday, looking to finish the regular season undefeated at 12 and 0. We now know who to thank for the students' free tickets next week. We're, we're, we're not going to discuss the conference championship game other than uh, what April and Sarah is already doing to get our students uh, in that game, which I think is just a huge, huge deal by her to be that, you know, uh, had that much uh, thinking, planning already ahead to be in front of that and for her to be so unselfish to, to help our kids like that. I thought that was unbelievable. Yeah, mentioning April and Sierra by name. Tickets for the Roadrunners' first ever appearance in Conference USA title game go on sale starting Monday. And congratulations to the Roadrunners Frank Harris, Clarence Hicks, and Hunter Duplessis, who swept the Conference USA weekly awards for offense, defense, and special teams players of the week. Congratulations, guys. Yes, congratulations. So exciting. Time now, 622, and we'll be right back. You've been taking mental health meds and your mind is finally in a better place. Except now you have uncontrollable body movements called tardive dyskinesia, TD, and it can seem like that's all people see. Some meds for mental health can cause abnormal dopamine signaling in the brain. While how it works is not fully understood, Ingreza is thought to reduce that signaling. Ingreza is a prescription medicine used to treat adults with TD movements in the face and body. People taking Ingreza can stay on their current dose of most mental health meds. Don't take Ingreza if you're allergic to any of its ingredients. Ingreza may cause serious side effects, including sleepiness. Don't drive, operate heavy machinery, or do other dangerous activities until you know how Ingreza affects you. Other serious side effects include potential heart rhythm problems and abnormal movements. Shift the focus more on you. Ask your doctor about Ingresa. It's simple. One pill, once daily. Number one prescribed for TD. Learn how you could pay as little as $0 at Ingresa.com. And your Tech News Twitter hosting its first shopping live stream. Are you paying attention, Steph? This is a big deal. There are some latest social media <laughs> giants to join the trend. Twitter's event set for Sunday is a collaboration with Walmart. It's being described as a 30-minute variety show featuring electronics, home goods, apparel, and more stuff that Stephanie needs. <laughs> yes. All of it. Thank you, Mark. TikTok rolling out on more smart TVs, including Google and Android TV, as well as some LG and Samsung smart TVs. The move is seen as an effort to put TikTok into more direct competition with that rival YouTube. Uber is testing out a way to deliver marijuana. The company working with a Canadian cannabis retailer to allow more people to order marijuana on Uber Eats. Sorry, <laughs> but for now, the service is only offered in Ontario, Canada. Mm -hmm. Time now, 626 and 41 degrees out there. A local UPS employee accused of stealing prescription drugs from packages. How authorities were able to catch him coming up. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guy. There's a look at I-10 and Days of Allah. Things are looking good so far. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Chilling new video out of the horrific incident in Waukesha where an SUV plows through a crowd of people at a holiday parade. What we're learning now about the suspect coming up. Outside with Live Camp, check out your early morning sunrise out there over South Texas. It's going to be a beautiful day, but we are cold, especially to the west and north of San Antonio. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, November 23rd. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy that jacket again this morning. Pretty yeah. cold out there. It is required this morning. If you think you could go without it, good luck. Let us know how that goes. Mike Buster <laughs> Hage is here this morning with more, and I, mean, I think it feels cooler than 41 right now. I think well, so. it, we do have a little bit of wind chill mm -hmm. in areas, but first of all, I was going to ask that part of the, uh, the picture. Yes. Remind you of certain un colors of an undefeated football team? Hey. U-T-S-A. Oh, undefeated. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was thinking about my Longhorn. Sorry. <laughs> Sore subject. <laughs> Sore subject. <No>. U-T-S-A. <laughs> yes. Nothing against Longhorn, but. Uh, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Spoken like a long, former Longhorn there. So anyway, it is absolutely gorgeous start this morning and temperatures. Yeah, it is cold out there. We are at 40 dew points at 34. Very, very dry air. And what this means, obviously, this has allowed temperatures to really dip down, but then that that dryer is going to warm up very quickly. So we're going to be gaining a good 30 degrees or even more. Now there is a little bit of a breeze out there, so it's taken some of these temperatures, which are in the 40s. And look at that. Most areas are in the 30s as a 
of right now. It is freezing Balverde Bernie stage. Comfort is down to 31 degrees and then add in that little bit of a breeze here and there. So it feels like 37 at the airport, 36 in Holotus, Rio Medina, 35, 33 at Randolph. Bundle up, needless to say. Uh, mold is moderate. Grass, juniper, and pigweed are all on the uh, low side. So partly cloudy or mostly clear skies. Warmer later on today. We're going to have a lot of high clouds hanging around here. Not only today, but also going in through the, the weekend. Tomorrow it's going to be warmer and the humidity is going to be present. It'll start to return later on tonight. A couple of showers are possible late tomorrow night and then into primarily the first portion of the day on Thursday. That front's going to move on through here and actually temperatures are going to be dropping down. So we'll start off in the mid 60s early Thursday and only end up around 60 or even upper 50s by late in the day. It's also going to be breezy on Thanksgiving and then the weekend. Very chilly start on Friday morning. A couple of showers going to be possible then as we go into Saturday. Closer look at the weekend forecast coming up. Traffic Authority, Mr. Kvassos, what's going on? On, hey, good morning, Mike. In terms of traffic, it's been a pretty quiet morning. Let's take a look here around Transguide, see how things are shaping up for this Tuesday morning. 1604 at Tradesman, pretty dark out there. 410 at Bandera. Looks like we may have a busier commute uh, in some of these areas, but of course, you're going to want to make sure that you keep your eyes on the road because there's been some debris detected. Let's show you where that's at, taking you right to the map. 1604 westbound at La Contera Parkway. We can see a little bit of yellow already building up in those westbound lanes uh, because there is some debris again detected in there. I talked to our friends over at Transguide. Now they say it's still pretty dark, so we can't actually pinpoint where that debris is actually showing that is impacting traffic, but you know that we'll be watching that throughout the morning, but make sure you keep your eyes on the road as well. Wider look at the map. It's still pretty much green, but we have that crash that was detected off of I-10 westbound at Days of Allah. Looks like that has since cleared out. Let's take you to those inbound times. If you plan on traveling to San Antonio, maybe in the next few moments, pretty much green across the board. You're not going to encounter any problems right now, so maybe a great time to grab that cup of coffee and get on the roadways. Let's take one last look at 35 in Nogalitos, where traffic is moving in some of these areas. Look like the sun is coming out, but we're going to continue to watch these roads closely, guys. Mark. Thanks, Stephen. New this morning, a UPS employee may have abused the access he had to several packages that contained pills for people who needed them for medical reasons. After several months of stealing the drugs, DEA officials have arrested and charged the young man with a third degree felony. Sarah Costa joins us in the studio now with the details on the case. And Sarah, how were officials able to arrest this man? Hey, good morning, Mark and Steph. It's actually someone within UPS. It was a security supervisor for UPS that made the Drug Enforcement Agency aware that one of their employees was seen on surveillance video opening packages and stealing the pills inside. The man accused of this crime is 24-year-old Cesar Casillas. UPS security personnel turned over surveillance footage to the DEA between September 20th to October 6th that showed Casillas Casillas stealing from several packages. On October 25th, DEA investigators interviewed the man where he admitted to opening the packages while working and stealing prescription pills for his own use and to sell since the beginning of the year. Casillas also turned over his phone, which had several text messages indicating a transaction for those drugs. Now, after his interview, Casillas quit his job at UPS before UPS could actually fire him. He's now facing a third degree felony charge and a misdemeanor charge. Mark. Thank you, Sarah. Also new this morning, a man shot and killed overnight has been identified as 67-year-old Daniel Sales. Shooting happened just before 10 p.m. on Cub Path and Tiger Way, just north of Petranca Road on the far west side. SAPD hasn't released many details, but officers did say one person is in custody. In your morning headlines, new details about the driver allegedly behind the wheel of that SUV that plowed through a Christmas parade in Wisconsin. 39-year-old Daryl Brooks is expected in court today to answer the charges, and overnight the community came together to remember the victims. ABC's M1 is following the story. Good morning. Now, as police continue to investigate this incident, we are learning more about the suspect, including how he faced at least six other convictions of violent behavior. This morning, a city in mourning. Waukesha, Wisconsin, still reeling after an SUV tore through a holiday parade, leaving five people dead. Hundreds gathered last night for a prayer vigil not far from the scene of the tragedy. At least 48 injured, including 18 children, 10 of them still fighting for their lives. I literally saw roughly 10 people bounce off of that car and, and you could hear thud, 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 thud as he drove through that. 
This morning, police saying 39-year-old Daryl Brooks was the man behind the wheel, arrested and charged with five counts of first-degree intentional homicide. Earlier this month, Brooks was accused of running over the mother of his child with what appears to be the same SUV. He was out on a $1,000 bail. Investigators believe Brooks was fleeing another crime scene when he drove into the Christmas festivities, though he was not being pursued at that time. This tragedy, authorities say, is not connected to terrorism. Now, if he is convicted of murder, Brooks faces life in prison. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. There's new outrage stemming from the Ahmad Arbery trial in Georgia. During closing arguments, one lawyer brought up Arbery's toenails. Also at the courthouse, new concern about demonstrators outside. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. Jury deliberations are expected to begin today in the trial of three white men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery. The judge is moving deliberations to an interior room of the courthouse, concerned about jurors hearing protesters outside. What do we want? A defense attorney called for a mistrial because of the demonstrations. There was a truck carrying a coffin with the names of the defendants on it. The judge denied the motion, allowing closing arguments to resume. Travis McMichael, his father Gregory, and William Bryan are accused of chasing down and murdering Arbery in Georgia last year. Their lawyers say the men had reasonable suspicion to believe Arbery had stolen from a construction site before the encounter, arguing that the killing was justified under a citizen's arrest law at the time. And so he's done what he thinks the law allows him to do. Arbery was never seen stealing from the construction site, but a defense attorney called Arbery a recurring intruder and then said this about Arbery. Turning Ahmad Arbery into a victim after the choices that he made does not reflect the reality of what brought Ahmad Arbery to Satilla Shores in his khaki shorts with no socks to cover his long dirty toenails. Arbery's mother was heard saying, wow, before she left the courthouse. I sat there for the last two weeks and let them dehumanize my son. The prosecution then beginning its closing argument, claiming Arbery was targeted because of his race. And they made their decision to attack Ahmaud Arbery in their driveways because he was a black man running down the street. If you are the initial unjustified aggressor, you don't get a claim self-defense. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. New this morning, an investigation underway in Bulgaria after a passenger bus crashes, killing at least 45 people, including 12 children. Authorities say the bus caught fire immediately after crashing, making it impossible for most of the passengers to escape. Bulgaria's foreign minister visited the scene and says he has never witnessed something more horrifying. Reports say most of the passengers were tourists. Seven survivors were taken to the hospitals for treatment. The cause of the crash is still unclear, but investigators say it appears the bus hit a guardrail and lost control. Time check right now, just about 640, 41 degrees. And during the holidays, you may feel guilty about all the food you eat, but coming up next, we're gonna share some tips to make sure you and your guests leave feeling full and not full of regret. 643, welcome back. True or false, most people gain five to seven pounds over the holidays. That is false. Several studies now show most people gain about a pound from Thanksgiving to New Year's, but a report in the New England Journal of Medicine shows that most adults never lose that extra pound, so you can see how it might add up over the years. The best bet is to avoid gaining the pound. And Sarah Costa explains that there are some simple swaps to do at your next holiday party to help you not gain weight. I always go back for more bread rolls. My favorite holiday food, rum balls. Anything that you want to give me, I will eat it. You don't want to deprive yourself, but you can make wiser choices. So a good strategy would be to stick to the foods that are really special for that time of year. First, keep your drink calories in check. One cup of eggnog has 350 calories. Swap it with new almond milk nog with just 70 calories. Lower calorie choices also include red wine or even better. Champagne. Also, don't overdo the appetizers. Artichoke, spinach, and onion dips are holiday must-haves, but swap out the sour cream for plain low-fat Greek yogurt. Cup for cup, you'll save 180 calories. And nutritionists say shrimp, 
is always a low calorie option with just 25 calories per piece. According to the Calorie Control Council, a typical holiday meal is 3,000 calories, which is 500 to 1,000 calories over what a woman and man should consume in a day. Your best bet, swap the casseroles for the fresh steamed or baked veggies. Now, which pie should you pick? Pecan. Pumpkin. Ah! <laughs> Pumpkin is the way to go. If we keep our portions in check, then that can help to make the overall meal stay a little bit more balanced. And instead of cozying up with a cup of hot chocolate, try some cinnamon tea. It has a lot less calories and may even help decrease blood sugar. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. This is the season for giving. There's still time to donate a new pair of shoes to our Share the Shoes Drive. So far, far people have donated about 4,000 pairs, but there's an endless amount of children in the, I'm sorry, yeah, 400. I said 4,000. Why did I do that? I'd love for us we, to have 4,000. Awesome. Yeah. You can drop off a new pair of shoes at any SAPD substation. We're looking for shoes of all sizes, toddlers to teens. All the shoes, whether it be hundreds or thousands, will be donated to the local nonprofit Good Samaritan Community Services next month, just in time for the holidays. We're taking donations through next Tuesday, which is the 30th. Awesome. So we still have time. And I saw some problems out there on Loop 1604. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavasso. You know, thankfully, Mark, Steph, the problems that we've been seeing look like they're pretty minor. Right here, 1604 Houseman is the view from Trans Guide. We see some flashing lights in a vehicle that has their emergency lights on. Texas has listed this as a stalled vehicle out there in the area. Now, just as a reminder, make sure that you are checking your tire pressure this morning. Mine was a little bit low before I got out on the roadways, so make sure that everything is working properly. But this, uh, let's take you to the map and see how it's impacting traffic. Now, that's been reported in the westbound lanes of 1604 right at Kyle Seal Parkway, but we're seeing a little bit of a build up there in those westbound lane so we'll continue to watch that throughout the morning especially with morning rush here taking you right not too far from there though there's still some debris detected out there of loop 1604 westbound at lock and terror parkway that could possibly be where we're seeing some issues out there in terms of the traffic but right now nothing too big right that would cause any delays for your early morning drive wider look the map does show it's just been pretty much green as we start this new traffic tuesday so nothing to complain about here but again make sure that your car is working properly before you get on the roadways guys Thank Question you. for you, Mr. Cavazos. Oh, oh, we hit our goal for no shape. Yes, we did. Uh, I was going to wait to to share that to spill the beans, but yeah, uh, oh, we sorry. hit. No, no, I love that. Number two in the country, over ten thousand dollars raised, about ten thousand five hundred dollars raised. So we have exceeded our goal. We're going to continue to do that. We you know the message doesn't stop just because we've reached that goal. That's right. Awesome job. Yeah, great job. And thank you to the community. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Hey, thank you. Is leading the way. Still, you wow. are. Okay. You are not yes. by far. For yeah. now. Yeah, okay, got a kidding. comfortable lead, Mike. <laughs> keep keep them coming. I mean, that's yeah. just our little, you know, kind of ego battle yeah. between between <laughs> us. But yeah, if we can, you know, do we go for what fifteen thousand now? Let's do, do it. Go for yeah. broke. What the heck? So. Wow, Team but Silver Fox doing well. Team Silver Fox. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's gray haired folks got to stick together. Hey, uh, anyway, beautiful pictures from Mr. McClellan over there at Woodlong Lake and a couple of different views and some of those high wispy clouds. We're going to keep a lot of high clouds. We're, we really don't have any right now. I mean, it's a gorgeous sunrise out there. It is definitely cold. We have a wind chill. Feels like freezing. Bernie Stage, Balverde, Comfort, close close enough to it in Kerrville, Hondo. Randolph, yep, bundle up, and then you won't need a jacket by later on today. We uh, don't have anything really as far as clouds, but notice how there is uh, some cloudiness coming in here from the west, and then we're going to see a lot of high clouds coming in as well. So it's not really looking off to the west, but looking down there to the southwest, this low right here, which is parked off Baja of California, that's going to just kind of sit there. It is a cutoff low and as the name implies, it is cut off from the main flow of the, the jet stream, the, the upper level steering winds. What it will do though is continue to throw some of these high clouds in here and that's why these computer models make it look like we're completely cloudy. Just a lot of high clouds today. I think we will have some sunshine obviously mixed in with these uh, clouds. Then tomorrow, a lot more in the way of clouds and by tomorrow evening we are going to have a couple of showers possible then especially overnight into Thursday and this is as the front moves on through here and a decent chance for some rain about a 50 almost 60 percent chance for some rain especially the first portion of the day then most everything a lot of computer models are in agreement and it looks like that all this is going to be pushed on out of here by later on in the afternoon it is going to be breezy and temperatures are going to be dropping down so we'll start off very humid uh, basically warm 65 degrees early on Thanksgiving morning and then we drop down into the uh, about 60 degree range upper 50s by later on in the afternoon. 
Friday is going to be sort of a, a break in the action. And then Saturday, another rain chance moves on in here. And again, this is a broad brush, as I call it, the computer model, but a fairly right now, fairly good chance for some rain on Saturday and then some leftovers down at the south, especially on Sunday. So the forecast goes like this today. We are going to warm up very quickly this morning, make it up to 67 already by noon and the top off into the low 70s. So jackets this morning, probably won't need it by this afternoon. Tomorrow it, it's still going to be coolish in the morning, uh, but nowhere near as cool. Almost 20 degrees warmer tomorrow morning, thanks to the, all the extra humidity in here. Then we get up to 75 in the afternoon. The front moves through early on Thursday, and that's a better chance for some rain. Then it will start to come to an end by uh, later in the day on Thursday. And Friday is going to be a chilly day, as will Saturday. It's a little bit of rain on Saturday and overall nice looking weekend, though. We'll take it. Yeah. Looks good. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Right now we're at 650, about 41 degrees. A local artist specializes in bringing the outside inside. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have more on his murals tomorrow on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam. Wow, it looks beautiful out there, but it is chilly, like Mike said. Go ahead and grab that jacket. 41 degrees. He says you probably won't need it this afternoon, but I'm going to keep a sweater in my car just in case. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're talking about the Christmas tree crunch and many other headlines on GMA, including, of course, the update on at least five people dead and dozens injured in Wisconsin. The suspect of that attack expected to face a judge today. We are live there with the latest and we'll tell you what we're learning about the victims. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. We are approaching five minutes till seven on your Tuesday morning. Downtown San Antonio has undergone its Christmas transformation. The Riverwalk decorated with lights and the tree is up at Travis Park. Just needs to be lit, which happens this Friday. And on the same night, the annual Ford Holiday River Parade. It's back this year and coming up on GMSA at nine. Max Massey gets an exclusive first look behind the scenes at what this year's parade could look like. Let's check on traffic right now. Here's Steven Cavazos. I like this Tuesday traffic. It's not been that bad, but we do want uh, drivers to be aware that there is a stalled vehicle out there of 1604. Uh, this is a shot from Hausman where we see some flashing lights and emergency lights from that vehicle, obviously indicating this driver is receiving some assistance. Let's take you right to the map, not causing any issues there in those westbound lanes at Kyle Seal Parkway where that stall is detected. Taking a wider look, though, it's pretty much been green throughout the morning, and we are not mad about it, especially with morning rush already here. Quick look at these inbound times does show it's still green across the board, so hopefully people are at, at home enjoying their cup of coffee for this holiday week. We're going to continue to keep a close eye on the roadways, Mike. And beautiful start this morning. We have got some pretty cold temperatures, though. Uh, we hit 40 right now in town. Freezing readings up there. A burning stage, Balverde up in the hill country, and then a little bit of a wind chill to deal with as well. So bundle up and then big warm up throughout the day. 73 for a high temperature today. And we do have some rain early in the day on Thursday. Friday for the Christmas parade down there on the river. It is going to be chilly. You're going to want to take a coat, but it's going to be pretty nice. Then another chance of rain Saturday. We will be prepared. Thank you, Mike. Yep. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 9. Have a great day. Good Morning America is coming up next right here on KSAT 12.